This is your organization's Microsoft Forefront Threat Management Gateway Server, where you're signed on as an administrator. To prepare your organization for ADFS, the environment must be configured with a trusted third-party certificate, which will be used to secure federated service communications. First, you'll see how to create a certificate signing request, CSR. To get started, navigate to the Microsoft Management Console. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. This is the Microsoft Management Console. From here, administrators can add snap-ins that provide tools for managing various system and network resources. Before creating a certificate signing request, you'll need to add the certificate snap-in to the console root window. Follow the prompts on the screen to see how. From the list of available snap-ins, verify that local computer is Now that you've added the certificate Ensure you have the proper credentials to verify Specify the certificate properties beginning with a friendly name. On the Subject tab, Follow the on-screen prompts to enter details about the computer for which the certificate is being issued. Now, follow the prompts on the screen to create alternative names for the certificate as necessary. Next, click the Extensions tab. Here you can add details about how the certificate will be used. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. In this case, select Server Authentication. Next, click the Private Key tab, and then follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Select the Exchange Key Type. Next. Expand Key Options. Under Key Options, enter additional key parameters. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Select the option to Make Private Key Exportable. Review the settings you've selected for your customized certificate request. Then, click Next to complete the CSR. Specify where to save the certificate request file. Click Finish to save the CSR as a text file. Now that you've created the request, you'll submit it to a third-party certificate provider that will then issue the certificate. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Now, follow the prompts on the screen to highlight and copy the text of the request. Next, navigate to a trusted third-party certificate provider of your choice. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Here's an example of a third-party certification authority website. Follow the prompts on the screen to submit the request. Once the request is submitted, an email will be sent with the certificate files. Click Submit to complete the request. Here, an email message has been received from the certification authority. In the message, click the attached Digicert zip file. Next, save the file to the computer where you'll install the certificate. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue.
Next, open the folder and extract the certificate files. Now you can import the newly issued certificate into the local computer certificate store on the Threat Management Gateway server. First, switch back to the Management Console where you added the certificate snap-in. In the Management Console, navigate to the Certificate Import Wizard where you'll see how to import the certificate you just downloaded. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. The Certificate Import Wizard lets you import certificates in. Browse to the certificate file and select the certificate file and then click Open. Verify that the correct certificate store is displayed and then click Next. Click Finish to complete the process of. Now that the certificate has been imported into the local computer certificate store, the next step is to export the certificate with its private key so it can be used on the other servers where you need to secure communications. To begin this process, open the certificate store. In the certificate store, select the certificate you just imported, and then open the certificate export wizard. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. In the Certificate Export Wizard, select the option to export the private key with the certificate. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. To protect the exported copy of the security certificate, assign it a password. In the File to Export window, enter the name of the file you want to export from the certificate store. Finally, verify the export settings you chose, and then click Finish to complete the export process. Now, close out of the console root window and navigate back to the location of the exported certificate, where you'll begin the next task. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Now that you've successfully exported the certificate with its private key, You'll copy it to the servers in your organization where ADFS and the Federation Service Proxy will be installed, and optionally, to your organization's Exchange server. To get started, copy the certificate from your local disk to your Exchange server. To access this server, enter your login credentials. Paste a copy of the certificate into the folder on the Exchange server. Next, copy the certificate to the server where you'll install ADFS. Paste a copy of the certificate into this folder. Next, navigate to the server where you will install the Federation Service Proxy. As before, paste a copy of the certificate into this folder. The certificate is now copied to the servers where you will need to secure communications. In the next guide in the series, you'll see how to import the certificate for use in the necessary server roles. Next, you'll see how to review and edit firewall policies in the Forefront Threat Management Gateway Console to ensure that external communication to your ADFS and Exchange Web Access are enabled. First, Navigate to the Forefront TMG console. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. This is the Forefront TMG console, where you'll associate the previously exported certificate with the web listener to authenticate and route traffic from external network connections to your organization's network. To do this, click Toolbox and then open the web listener. In the web listener, replace the temporary certificate with the new certificate that you imported earlier. Follow the on-screen prompts to see how. Ensure that the new certificate is highlighted and then click Select. 
Next, navigate to ADFS Properties to verify the IP address and public domain name used for your organization. Verify that the domain name and internal IP address are correct, and then click Public Name. Here, verify that the domain name is correct, and then click OK. Now, verify your organization's public domain name and IP address in Exchange Web Access. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Verify that the domain name and IP address are correct, and then click OK. Since you changed the certificate associated with the web listener for this firewall policy, you need to apply this change. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. This task is now complete. Close the window to move on to the next task. The next task is to add a new DNS host record to the forward lookup zone. This record should point to the IP address for your organization's Forefront Threat Management Gateway, or Firewall. For the purposes of this guide, you'll see how to do this from DNS Manager. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Verify the records in the forward lookup zone to ensure they're configured for your organization. To create a new host record, select New Host. Here, you'll add a host record to be used for Active Directory Federation services. Enter the name FS in the name field, and then add the public IP address. When you're finished adding new records, click Done. As you can see, the FS record has been successfully created. This guide, Preparing Your Environment for Active Directory Federation Services, is now complete. In this guide, you saw how to prepare your organization to install and configure Active Directory Federation Services. We encourage you to progress to the next guide in the series. Installing and Configuring Active Directory Federation Services.